In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about recreational vehicle antennas. Living here in Grass Pass, Oregon, we have quite a few people that show up here that own motorhomes. And a lot of times they call the shop here wanting to know why they're not getting any local reception. So one of the first things I'll ask them is, that, have you turned on the power going to the antenna? A lot of times they don't even know what I'm talking about. I don't know if it's because they bought the motorhome used or they just never learned the system, but basically it boils down to this. Inside the coach, you're going to find a little panel, probably going to be a, a light colored. It may or may not have a cigarette lighter plug on it, but it's got a switch often that you'll have to push in, and it basically turns on the power going to the amplifier in the antenna itself. Now, a lot of people don't realize that these batwing antennas you'll often see on motorhomes have a built-in amplifier. In fact, if we take this one apart here, you can look inside and you can see there's the amplifier right there. And the way this works is it gets its power through the coax itself, through this terminal right here, and it provides power for the amplifier. And once the signal's amplified at the point of the antenna, it sends a signal back down the coax into the coach where your television is. So if you're troubleshooting one of these, what you'll want to start out by doing first is measuring the voltage going to this point right here. So you'll go ahead and unscrew your coax. And inside of your coax, you'll see the center terminal here and the shielding. And basically you're going to put your meter on the volt scale DC voltage. You're going to measure between the outer shielding and the center pin here. And you should measure between 12 and 19 volts. If you don't, you got to figure out why. Uh, sometimes you may have bad coax or maybe it's too corroded. It can be for a variety of different reasons. Now they've come up with a lot of upgrades since they came out with this original antenna here. Some of the newer ones might be a little bit better on the UHF band or UHF band rather. I believe that's uh, how they advertise them as being slightly enhanced. And also as far as the replacement goes, it's fairly straightforward. You might notice that your new antenna has a slightly different design, but I've yet to encounter one that didn't fit on the existing mass that was on top of the motorhome. And the only thing I want to caution you about is when you pull these bolts out here, be careful. You've got a little C-clip there that it's easy to lose while you're pulling it off. <clears throat> But if you take your needle nose and carefully pull it off, you should be okay. Anyway, the other thing I was going to say is from time to time, there'll be a, a little bit of a misunderstanding about the way the wiring is, is hooked up inside of the motorhome. Sometimes you'll see a, uh, a panel on the side of the motorhome like this. It might just need a jumper that allows your signal to go from one room to another. Every motorhome is going to be different, so I don't want to imply that this is necessarily the case for you, but this is something I see from time to time. So there you have it. If you have a problem with your motorhome antenna, give us a call here. I do troubleshoot them and uh, be glad to see if I can help you out. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe.